Hey folks, welcome to another numeracy video. In this video, we're going to be looking at standard to ordinary form, particularly with negative powers. Now, I would strongly recommend you watching the previous video in this playlist series, uh, just so that you don't kind of just jump in and go, whoa, whoa, what's happening here? All right, so let's get going here. So we've got 2.6 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Now, if you've been watching my um, videos, the previous one that we did was with positive power. So we were actually moving the decimal point to the uh, right side. Now, this side, this time, what we're going to do is a couple of things, right? Now, if you ever get in doubt, you're like, oh, I can't remember. Do I go right or do I go left? Well, think about it like this. This number has a negative power. If it has a negative power, that means your number is going to be extremely small. If it has a positive power, then the number is going to be quite, quite large. So knowing that in mind, now we know that the decimal point is right here at the moment, right? Because that's where the 2.6 is. But if we move the decimal point four spots to this way, then you're actually going to end up with 26,000. That's actually a, quite a quite a big number, right? But when it comes to negative four, what you do is you actually go the opposite way. So we're going to go the opposite way to about four four numbers that we've got to go through. So we're going to get point zero 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 two six. Now, if you're not sure about this, what you could always do again is just put that in the calculator. 2.6 times 10 to the power of negative 4 and you're going to end up with a fraction now if you've been using these types of calculator quick quick little tip shift equals gives you the number which is 0 0.0026 and as you can see that is the answer that i've actually got so looking at uh question a um i've got 1.2 so i'm going to write down 12 and what i'm doing is i've got negative 5 so i need to move this one two, three, four, and five. So then I've got two, three, four zeros underneath it. So my final answer is going to be 0 0.00012. And as you can see, it is quite painful to write this many zeros. That is why we like to work in standard form. But anyway, we're going to put this in here just to see. So we got 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative five. And what have we got? We've got 0 0.00012, yeah, four zeros before the, yeah, that, that looks good. Uh, looking at question B, so we've got 4.7, so I'm gonna start it out as 47, and I'm moving the decimal point one number, two numbers, three numbers, so I'm gonna get 0 0.0047. So let's just try that out quickly. So we're going to go 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Uh, that's going to give me 0 0.0047. So far, so good. And try the last one, 3.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So we're going to write down 35. And the decimal point is moving one, two numbers. So I'm going to get 0 0.035. So 0 0.035. Now, you might be wondering, how come in question B, I didn't write 0 0.0047? I just wrote that as 0 0.0047. And that's that's not a problem. You can actually do that. Uh, sometimes we just like to write the zero in front of the decimal point so people can actually see the decimal point. So 0 0.035 is my answer for C. But let me just check that. So I got 3.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. And that is giving me, what do we got? 0 0.035. Cool, so that is basically a quick summary for standard to ordinary form, particularly looking with negative powers. Now, as I said in the previous videos in this series, just always remember this. If you have a number times 10 to the power of a positive number, um, then usually your final number should be like quite big. So it's like a large number will have a positive power for the 10. But if you have a negative power for the 10, then you're going to get an extremely small number. So that's just something for you to kind of do like a quick check uh, just to see if you've actually done um, going from standard to ordinary form or the other way correctly. Well, that was more than a short summary, but there we go. All right, folks, that is basically it for this video. As always, don't forget to like this video, share this video and subscribe to keep up with the latest content. Now, there should be a couple of playlists popping up here and here. Great material for revision and as always, thank you for watching.